Liz. Respect. Hey, go right there. Tell her. <laughs> Maria. It means what? Tell respect. Maria. Respect. <laughs> I know what it means in Spanish. Reverence means that you respect your husband. Even though he's a dodo bird, you still respect him. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> Even though he's mean, you still what? Respect him. The Bible doesn't say in, in, that he's perfect, you're going to respect him, no? All right? All right. Let's continue. Number seven. The husband <clears throat> sees an outward change. You got that in both letters, right? So you can see it. It's a result of an inward transformation. Amen? What does that mean? The husband sees an outward change. It's a result of an inward transformation. What does that mean in a nutshell? What's Brenda? on the inside comes out. What's in the inside is coming out. I mean, what's coming out? The new you. The Jesus in you. Amen? But if you're mean disrespectful disobedient no respect to his wants unkind <coughs> a wild thing an evil thing a bad thing amen what's the problem there's no what inward what there's no inward transformation in other words you're not being what changed from the inside and that's why nothing good's coming out so the problem was not your husband. What was the problem? Who was the problem? Wife. The wife in God is using the husband to show you the real you. The you what? Full of macaroni and baloney. Amen? You need to change. And God will help you. You, you cannot do it on your own. It's impossible. It's impossible to love your husband with your own love, with your human love, because your human love is what? It's limited. That's why you need to be transformed in the power of the Holy Spirit and be Christ-like so you can love God. I mean, love God, but also love your husband with God's love, which is unconditional. And sometimes, man, you're going you're gonna to really need to what? Surrender so you can love then this raggedy Ann, then this raggedy Ken. Andy. Huh? Raggedy Ann and Andy. Raggedy Andy, Raggedy Andy, amen, the Raggedy Cowboy, and so forth, the unlovable husband, can you imagine, hey pastor, this is my husband, yeah, he's unlovable, yeah. amen, how do you do it, I give you a gold medal for loving an unlovable evil man, amen, is that you, no, I'm just joking, <laughs> But if, if you continue to, to love him as God wants, God will what? Change him. Amen. And sometimes, you know, uh, the husband is walking with God, but he's not, he's not perfect. That's going to what? Give you a hard time sometimes, right? Yeah. Amen. You still need to what? Amen. Love him and submit. Okay. D. It says, elder women are called to be illustrations of those who are younger. What does that mean, older and younger? Come here, Granny! Hey, Granny! He'll get in the bush. Yes, yes! <laughs> I want you to be an illustration. <laughs> Why? I can't hear you. Speak louder! <laughs> Wait a minute, where's my depends? <laughs> <laughs> you know what depends are? You don't know what depends are? You're gonna wear them one day, boy. <laughs> <laughs> they're 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 adult pampers. And don't tell me why. <laughs> oh my so what are the elder women? Those kind of women? No. Mm -mm. Who? Maria? No, the the women who have been saved longer. Not really. Not the women that have been saved longer. I'm the woman that that have been saved for twenty years, they they're still baby Come Christians. On. Who? The ones that are growing in Christ. Amen. Okay. They're mature. They're maturing and they have character of Christ. Those. That's good. You can have a wife, a woman that's been saved for three years and she's already growing in Christ and maturing in Christ. And you can have a woman that's been saved for 40 years and she's a baby in Christ. 
you know about the years is what the surrendering of the heart and in, 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 in the cooperation of the woman with the Holy Spirit and wanting to change and practicing the word of God amen and submitting to God and so forth okay you got that I have to correct that because the only need granny I'm the oldest here I got granny you better go check your pamper uh, Titus chapter 2 verse 3 4 and 5 Cano Titus Titus chapter 2 uh, hey, here. verse 4 and 5 uh, I forgot I don't see it where's your notes uh, Titus 2 3 to 5 oh, I'm sorry Titus Chapter 2, verse 3, 4, and 5, right? Yes, sir. I lost it because the thing went black. Titus. Go ahead, my brother. Amen. Yes, sir. Titus 2, 3 through 5 reads, The older women, likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not giving too much wine, teachers of good things that they admonish the young the young women to love their husbands to love their children to be discreet chaste homemakers good obedient to their own husbands that the word of god may not be blasphemed okay uh, brenda you got you bring the standard yes sir it says uh, Two, three, through five. It says, Older women likewise are to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossips, nor enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good, so that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sensible, pure, workers at home, kind, being subject to their own husbands, so that the word of God will not be dishonored. Okay. Let me read it in the Mike Swatty's version. <laughs> Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> it says the older women are the what? The, more, the more women that are what? Mature that are mature and growing and Christ like. Okay? Yeah. Not old in age. Talking about, you can have a, a woman that's been saved three years, she's really maturing. And, and she's, she, she's got it because she's surrendering to God on a daily basis. Okay? So the, the mature women in Christ respect. Or be reverent in your behavior. Not malicious gossip. Stop gossiping, right? Mm -hmm. Nor enslaved to much wine. What does that mean? I'm going to open it to you. Nor enslaved to much wine. Addicted. Huh? Addicted. Addicted to what? To wine mm -hmm. or anything. Um, not to drink wine? No, it doesn't mean that. Not, not to drink wine. Remember that they run to the drink before they run to God? No, the thing is this. When someone was would drink wine, much wine, what will happen to the person when they get drunk? They get drunk. So when a person is drunk, who is really possessing that person? The devil. The devil, right? Or that what? Spirit. spirit. And then that spirit, the wine, the wine takes over. It's not the real you no more. So what Paul is saying here, then this, don't let that spirit, right? Don't let something what drive you I'm not what practicing my word. What can, in other words, don't let your anger consume you. Because when wine consumes you, it takes all, right? Don't let your anger consume you. Don't let your gossip consume you. Then don't let your unforgiveness consume you. That's what we're talking about. That he's talking about what the effects of the wine. When the person gets drunk. Yeah, that kind of okay. takes some nose, brother. He says here once again. Not malicious gossips, nor enslaved to much wine. In other words, don't let nothing what? Take control. Take control of your life. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Because when you, get, when you get drunk on wine or alcohol, then it's Amen. that alcohol Amen. what controls you. And you make a fool out of yourself. Right. Anger will what control you and make a fool out of yourself. Because out of anger, you will say words you don't mean. Amen. Then it's unforgiveness. You do things. Then it's, you, you block things. Amen. The blessings of God. Then it says, teaching what is good, so that they may encourage, there it is, so that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands, to love their children. In other words, you're going to impart that 
<coughs> Come out of there. You're going to impart the you, the loving you, the respecting you, the submitting you, the forgiving you, the Christ liked you, the mature women. You impart that to your younger women in the Lord, the, the baby Christians that are just being born again, the women. Then this, if they're mothers, then this, and they're, they're separated right now from their husband or they're still married, whatever, you're going to what? Impart godly womanhood to them. Amen. If they're not married, you impart the womanhood of a godly woman whenever they do get married for them to submit and to love and so forth to the husband. Amen? You're the role model, in other words. What is this teaching called? The role of a wife. You're a role model. Should I continue? Yes, sir. Then verse 5, right? It says here, to be sensible. What does it mean, sensible? Common sense, uh, I don't know, sensible? To be a good decision maker. Decision maker, good, okay, and, and anyone else? What does the word sensible mean? Anyone? Okay, Google. Okay, Google, <laughs> what does it mean? What does sensible mean? Making good decisions, right? That's what you said? What you said? Making a good decision? Amen. Okay, so stick with that one. Now, pure. What does pure means? Clean. Be clean. Be, be, walk with Jesus. A daily repentant life. Like, listen to this. Underline this one in your Bible. Workers at home. What does that mean? Housewives. Huh? Housewives. Be a housewife. In other words, if, if you work on the outside, it's okay. But don't forget your housework. And the husband can help them in. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> work is at home. Now, if the wife does not have to work, husband don't let her work in the work field. Then this, you, this is your responsibility, the husband. Amen. She needs to take care of the children and be at what? Workers at home. Take care of the household. Be a housewife. Kind. Mm -hmm. Go to work, Joseph. Being subject to their own husband, otra vez, submissive. With this, this is the liberal hell, they'll probably hang us. Huh? Being subject to their own husbands. I don't submit to no man. That's why you've been divorced 10 times, stupid lady. <laughs> don't submit to no man. You ain't gonna turn into a lesbo. Then this, you submit to a woman now. I'm going to take that back. That's, that's not kindness. <laughs> Being subject to their own husbands so that the word of God will not be dishonored. My God. Every time Brenda doesn't submit their husband, what are you doing to the word of God? Dishonoring it. Dishonoring it. Oh, Every time David don't love his wife and forgive his wife, you're dishonoring the word of God. Ooh. God's going to give you a concussion. <laughs> Isn't that true? Right. <coughs> I, told, I told Joseph, we're having marriage class in last month, but he had a concussion. He was over there at the Catholic Church. <laughs> What's the pastor? <laughs> Here goes the priest. Are you looking for somebody, sir? <laughs> I'm looking for Pastor Mike. Oh, he's over there in the other church. He's the Catholic Church. St. Peter's. <laughs> Jesus. Should I continue? Should I continue? Uh, oops. He says here, all the women are called to be illustrations of those who are younger. Amen? The older women, I got that in bold letters, right? For a reason. Are the women who have grown. There it is, Maria. Spiritually. Look at that. The one to be saying the longest. I've seen women to be saying the longest. They're the most gossipers in the church. <laughs> and the more evil ones. Amen? And more dead. Amen. Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. <coughs> the elder women are the women who have grown spiritually and are godly examples. There it is. To the new baby Christian women who are on depends. 
<laughs> He's not there. I'm just joking. But to the new baby Christian women, man, you gotta be an example. A man know me. Priorities from Tito. This Spanish for Titus, right? <laughs> Tito? Tito. Amen. Wives are to love <coughs> excuse me. Their husbands and children. Wife, how are you supposed to love them, Brenda? Was it two by four in the hand? <laughs> You better get away from me. You better go to your next room right now. You got a two by four. I want to use this. <laughs> get don't touch me. Get away from me. I'll call the cops on you. Oh my God, now, I'm not saying you, but you know, I'm just then this. I've had so many marriages. I know what I'm saying is true. Then this. Where's the husband? He was out there coming out the back. <laughs> And not only did she draw him up the wall, she drove him up to the ceiling. What the? I mean, and that guy was, was coming against what? Uh, the laws of nature, no? The gravity? <laughs> Jesus. Brenda, what I was saying? What was your question? So, uh, how do you love. Yeah, how do you love your husband? With God's love. Okay. How do you love your husband? How should you love your husband? Unconditionally inspired. Is Christ what? Loves, loves him. And how does God love your husband? Unconditionally. So you tell your husband, I'm going to love you with a condition, boy. He's like, two by four here. <laughs> <laughs> no, Brenda, no. Maria, no. Don't give my friend here more concussion. Well, next time he's going to be over there at the Satan Church. You know, and it's going to be over there on Beauregard, the first satanic church. What? Where's Pastor Mike? Where am I? This is the first satanic church. I'm a Diablo Reverend. <laughs> Jesus, help me, Lord. In Ephesians 5.25, husbands are directed to love their wives. Husbands, love your wife. Why love your wife? Why love your husband? I don't know why. It's the way God is a command for God. Why, why is it important? Because that's God's order. What did we talk earlier about the weapon? Oh, there's no weapon against love. The devil can't fight it. There's no weapon against the love. Hey, Pastor, can you give me some marriage classes? Love your wife! <laughs> I gave you a gold nugget, right? Amen. And one day it dawned on him after 10 years, Pastor, it finally dawned on me. When I love my wife, the devil doesn't know how to fight it. Hijo, so the bunch of your generation. Amen. It finally dawned on him. The devil doesn't know how to fight love. Amen. And God says, love your husband. Love your wife. Eh. Go ahead. Man, you're going to have a hard time in your marriage. Hard time. Then you know, you let me talk to Joseph. One day we and Joseph were conversation, we were conversing, and he said, you know what, Pastor? Uh, when I went over there to the, and then he looked at me, what was I saying? He forgot, he, forgot. he had a concussion. <laughs> <laughs> then he had ashes on his forehead. <laughs> he went there on a Wednesday in the uh, church. <laughs> No. It was as wasty. <laughs> <laughs> and he came back the, the following week, and then he had a, a, a what do they call the star for the, the Satan? Jesus. Wait, hexagon? Yeah. Hexagram, a red one. No, a red with, with chicken blood. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you? I went to the church. You went there, Pastor. You went to the wrong one, boy. <laughs> Reverend Diablo. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just joking, right? But why, why does God say, love your husband and love your wife? God know. Because there's no weapon against The them. devil doesn't know how to fight that, that, that love. He, does, he doesn't. That's the key. Amen? Mm -hmm. Learn. It's not easy. But what's the key for you to do it? 
Who's going to help you to love your husband? God. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. You're not alone. But the problem, we don't invite the Holy Spirit to help us. You want to do it with your own strength. Yeah, that's where you're messing up. Mm -hmm. I learned by my mistakes. I'm giving them to you. Amen? Mm -hmm. Shall I continue? In Tito, chapter 2, verse 4, we are told that it is important that wives be taught to love their husbands and children. So what am I doing now? Teaching. I'm teaching. And one day you guys are going to be teaching couples. Ustedes, you and your wife, Mikey. That's going to give us more, more, more couples. We get that building right here in the next one. How many can fit there in the, in the building? Your mercado, how big is it? It's big. I've been there a long time. It's pretty big. How many, how, how many can we sit? Plus or minus people there. 800, I think. Like 800 people? I think. I don't know. Right. You think so? Like 800, 500, 600? Yeah, you got a picture of Like 500? Big, it's big. Let's say like, like let's say seven hundred. There are gonna be a lot of couples that are gonna need what counseling. marriage classes and counseling. The yes, where you guys come in. But be, before you can counsel, man, you gotta you gotta have your act together. <laughs> then it, there's the husband. He's got busted knuckles and all yeah. that. There's what's the black eye. You gotta love your wife, man. <laughs> <laughs> and the wife, yeah, you gotta love your husband. It's a matrix. Like that. This is what happened to you. <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. <laughs> when there's, there's a real, then the example of, of marriage. What not spiritual do. warfare. <laughs> then it's what not to do in marriage. Come here, a couple. I'll show and share with you. He got a block of tree. He got a station. He's working with the white hitting with the hammer. He got a black eye and a broken nose pointing that way. Yeah. <laughs> show and tell. Should I continue? So it says here, then they can train the younger women to love their husband and children. Go back to love, right? By their examples. It's not going to be easy. You're going to have your what? Your moments. Mm -hmm. But that's why there's forgiveness. And that's why there's pastors to what? To guide you, encourage you. you know, uh, Pastor, I slept my wife or... Then as I gave my husband, a, instead of Kool-Aid, I gave him a antifreeze. <laughs> and that's why there's... I'm going to watch me drink all these brand of... Why is it green? It's a new Kool-Aid they made. <laughs> and that's why this, this, this pastor to counsel you, to direct you in forgiveness. And, and there's also the police there who yes. attempt to murder. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, so I continue. <laughs> be right. Wives are to be self control and pure. That's found in verse 5, right? Men being subject to their own husband. Um, self control and purity are required of all Christians. And here, they are highlighted as, as vital ingredients for being a successful wife and mother. Self-controlling what? Pure. Impur impurity. And why self-control? Why self-control to the women? Because we can get out of control. It's easy to what? To snap back and have you three cents worth. Mm -hmm. To have the last word. Talk back. And then it's, and some women are bad at that, no. You, you're arguing with the husband and she's got to say that it, it, it makes it worse. It makes it worse. Some women, they know how to shut up. They have that in them. The Holy Spirit will help them. How can you argue with a husband and you don't say nothing? <laughs> he just walks away. What he do? Cat and dog? Walk away. Okay, <laughs> boom, black eye. Oh. <laughs> boom. The oh, nose is going that way now. It's going south. No, north. <coughs> <laughs> and now you got windows when you smile. You broke your tooth. And then this. You got stitching on your forehead. What happened there? I bumped my head in the 
tell the truth, I hit you with a rolling pin. <laughs> She will make a tortilla. You don't make me the tortilla every day. You don't make the tortilla like my mother makes. Every one day, pow! The rolling pin. The rolling pin principle got in your forehead. You got five stitches or staples. Five staples on your forehead. You got another concussion. Then the neighbor calls, hey, you have this over here. We, we, we might come for him. He went to the wrong house. <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, Betty, he's got a concussion. Who gave it to him? I ain't going to tell. <laughs> Put it, Joseph. Did you get to take care of Joseph, Maria? No, he's joking. Let's continue. Do I continue? We're almost done, right? Um, once again, self control and purity are required of all Christians. And here they are highlighted as vital ingredients for being a successful wife and mother. In 1 Timothy 2.9, to dress modestly with decency and propriety. What does that mean, propriety? Properly. Property. No mini skirts. What else? You can cover it up. You got to cover it up. Dennis. No one wants to see them twins but your husband. Hmm. I mean, let me, let me rephrase that. <laughs> <laughs> let me rephrase no, that. No, Don't tell this guy here. <laughs> no one's supposed to see yeah. them twins but your husband. <laughs> then you got a low cut blouse for a reason. You, you, you're, you're, you're bringing attention to yourself from another man or a lesbian. Oh, Lord has mercy. Jesus, Jesus Christ. So now continue. All right, no tight pants. Then you gotta put grease on your legs and everything to put those things on. <laughs> then this, you can't even walk. You walk like a penguin. <laughs> walk like a penguin. It took you ten hours to walk to church. <laughs> All right, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Wives are to be busy at home, to be kind. That is, I believe the, if the wife works, the husband should help at home. And if, if, if she doesn't work, then it, even like that, the husband should pitch in once in a while, not to help her. Yes, sir. Then this. But uh, to be a, a mother and a, and, and a wife, and you got kids, it's full-time work. It's never ending. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine you have, you have kids and then you're working? It's hard. It would be very hard. So I suggest if the wife does not have to work, don't work. Amen? He says here, when we're done, some wives have to work. They have to. Because the husband is not able or he's a bum. This is a bombo. Como dice su esposa? El bombo. Or he forced her to work. Amen? Because he do not want to work. Amen? Amen. She got quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You should put him to work. Put him in the street corner. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. No. No. No, no I'm talking about selling candy apples. No. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are t- you're thinking, you think it was the wrong mind over that lady? <laughs> Nobody wants them. And then he goes the lady, how much? <laughs> But it's an old lady. Oh my God. <laughs> an old lady in a wheelchair. How much? Ten dollars? <laughs> Brenda? <laughs> Nobody wants him. <laughs> hey, women will surprise you. <laughs> I redeem you, David. I redeem you, man. Okay, let me get out of this one. I got in trouble on this one, yeah. Um. C2. Huh? <laughs> some wives, some wives rather work than put up with housework and the kids. Ooh, that, that, that's wrong. They don't want to put up with the kids or housework. 
Then when did you get married then? Right? Yes. Wives are to be subject to their husbands. When marriage, when marriage is work, as God intends, they are as magnets. I'm sorry, they act as magnets, <clears throat> drawing the confused to consider the reality of Christian faith. In other words, people that are struggling in the marriage that want to not save them, I want to be like, you guys have it together. And they ask you, how come you guys didn't have been blessed in your marriage? And you begin to tell them about Jesus. Mm -hmm. They get saved, then you begin to disciple them. Amen. Amen. And you tell them it's not a perfect marriage, but then it's the blessing of God's upon us. <coughs> there's peace in the house. There's, there's, there's order, there's unity. There's anointing, there's God's presence, and so forth. Amen? Okay? Here's your name, Joseph. Concussion. <laughs> Amen? In Ephesians 5, 22 <coughs> and 33, but you're just <coughs> paraphrasing here. Wives. My God. What did I say? Wives. <laughs> what did I say? Wives. I didn't hear you. What did I say? Uh, me. Wives. No. Wives. What I say? Wives. Oh, I'm gonna tell you. What I say, Joseph? What I say? Say it. Wives. Wives. Oh man. You got. You still got a concussion. <laughs> okay, wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife. If the church submits to Christ. So also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Amen. In what? Everything. Underline in everything. Submit to the husband in what? Everything. Are I gonna submit to him on this? I don't only on this. What did God say? Yeah. Everything. But uh, I don't what did God say? Everything. But I don't look what you, you think. God says in everything. Amen. Everything means what? Oh, everything. What about he says, okay, God says everything here. Drink this beer. Nope. Where are you going? You're, okay, honey, give me the beer. No, give me the beer. It's a it's a bottle, right? One of those long necks. <laughs> Pow! Get him over the head. Another concussion. <laughs> <laughs> Another concussion for the vato, matar al vato. When your husband dies and they uh, do the autopsy, you, you, you give his brain to science, and, you, and the, the, the doctor, the scientist come and tell you, was your husband a professional pool player? <laughs> Look, he had a lot of concussions. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, más triste. Más triste, carnal. Any questions? Any questions? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, hope you enjoyed this class. I didn't mean to take this long. It was only two paces, Kano. <laughs> but uh, any questions on this one? Uh, Karina? Okay. Marina? Oh, Karina? Huh? Okay, 